Hallo und guten Tag. Mein Name ist Tiger Arcade und willkommen auf meinen YouTube. Why was I speaking in German? Was that even German? You tell me. Today we're gonna be talking about Uli Biringa. That was another bad attempt at German. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about the owner of the Behringer company or the Behringa company. There's been a lot of talk more and more lately about the the chip shortage crisis. It's been going on, you know, since the pandemic started, you know, COVID-19. If there's anyone in the world that doesn't know what that means. I did a little research of my own, asking a lot of questions. What uh, chip shortage, like which chip, where are they made? Uh, how bad is the, the shortage? You know, questions like that. We're gonna kind of look into this a little bit together, so you know it's already I'm in a different spot just because I'm sitting in front of my computer and we're actually gonna kind of investigate here together and we're gonna find out what is going on here all right so th this is taking a look at what was said on Facebook and this comes directly from Behringer's Facebook account it says the chip shortage has just become much worse 50% of the global production of neon gas required for all chip production comes from Ukrainian factories, which have now shut down. Okay, if, if, if we left it there, you know, I think people would be like, oh, damn. Yeah, that sucks. That's awful. But I had to say this part, but rather than complaining, okay, that's already not how you want to approach fans or people that are looking forward to your products. Rather than complaining about delivery dates for products, shouldn't we all take a step back and focus our thoughts and prayers on the Ukrainian people? Dude, we all think that the war in Ukraine is awful. I, I mean, you're piece of shit if you don't. I feel like this was kind of a deflective argument. Like there's truth to what they're saying, but at the same time, it's kind of like bouncing it off with emotion. Stop complaining because there's a war going on. You an asshole in a war. And all you can think about is getting more synthesizers and wanting release dates for your products. You suck. You suck. Yeah, so they share a video, neon shortages in semiconductor manufacturing. Okay, so I'm kind of curious if, if we did a little bit of research here. Let's look at where all of the semiconductor chips are made and see what we can learn here. So, yeah, this is what I thought. Most of the chips come from Taiwan, undeclared countries, United States of America, China, Singapore, Malaysia, South Korea. What they were talking about though was neon gas. Oh, damn, check this out. Production of vital raw materials for chip making is concentrated in Russia and Ukraine. Ooh. Yeah, so that's quite a chokehold on that. We all know, and there's no denying, the semiconductor chip crisis is happening, right? To try to be fair to Behringer, they're just getting frustrated about trying to meet the demand, you know, of, of their clients or, you know, us, the people, trying to meet that demand. But I think what people are trying to say to them is you know, as a counter argument is like, why are you guys, you know, announcing products that you can't deliver on, right? And, you know, Behringer's like, well, what do you want me to do? I got all these engineers and they keep coming up with all these great ideas. So again, like I'm, I'm kind of in the middle on this. I'm like, you're uh, coming up with more great ideas. Don't stop, you know, keep that momentum going. And if you have more great ideas, keep coming up with them. Even though many people would beg to differ, what's a great idea? You know, have a different opinion on what's a great idea. They take a lot of crap. A lot of their crap is deserved. A lot of it is just snobby people that think 
they're too good for certain types of synthesizers, but, and I wanna clarify something. On my previous videos, I'm not calling people who are against Behringer as synth snobs. Those aren't synth snobs. It's, it's people that think they're too good for a product, whether they think they know more or, you know, they're just better, they think they're better than that. Basically, my, my whole point is, there will always be people, it's not just Behringer. I could have gone through different companies. There's boutique enthusiasts, like like boutique company enthusiasts, or there's people who, I only like companies that are American, right? Or only ones that are from Sweden. You know what I mean? Like you'll get these loyalists and that's fine. I am biased towards American companies. I'm American. I also personally don't own any Behringer products but I don't think everything that they're doing is bad. I think you can find good and bad out of any company, if that makes sense. The bottom line is the chip shortage is affecting the uh, most industries that need these type of storage semiconductors. I believe there's some sort of uh, a device that you put. Someone can correct me or mention it in the comments, but I'm pretty sure semiconductors, well, let's, let's, let's look this up. What is a semiconductor chip? A semiconductor chip is an electric circuit with many components such as transistors and wiring formed on a semiconductor wafer and electronic device comprising numerous. Uh, these components is called integrated circuit. For, uh, from the perspective of functionality, semiconductor memory chips store data and programs on computer and data storage devices. I knew it, I called it. Okay. So it's used for data and storage purposes. So I don't, I don't know if every single synth would need this, you know, but I know that the car industry, like, you know, with these newer models that they're coming out with and obviously computers, it's, it's affecting that. What happened was during the pandemic, they feared a recession that there wasn't going to be a demand for certain products. So they cut the supply. They, they lowered the amount that needed to be made. And what actually ended up happening was tons of people wanted electronics during the pandemic, right? Because they were, they had more time to themselves, whether it was because of having to quarantine or work from home. There's so many different reasons. People started to have more time. And so they, they wanted to purchase these types of things. So the demand actually went completely opposite. It skyrocketed. They lowered, so what, because the semiconductor production went down, they couldn't meet that demand with such a high demand. So it, it kind, they kind of all screwed themselves over. They thought they, they were making the smart decision, preparing, but they ended up hurting themselves in the end. Now they're trying to meet that demand right now, but they can't. And so there's there's different things I've heard where, let, let me look into this really quick, but this is what I heard. 20, it was a $20 billion semiconductor plant in Ohio that's being built by one of these major companies. I can't remember, it's like a major computer company. Uh, here we go. Okay. Semiconductor giant Intel is investing 20 billion into two new chip factories near Columbus, Ohio, marking its first new manufacturing site in 40 years, according to an announcement by the company. This is January 26, 2022. Another question was, when do we think that this semiconductor stuff is going to ease up? And I don't know if there's really a simple answer to that. There's more of like, we hope based on these prospects. But what I was reading was 2023. Let's confirm that. Some experts and Auto companies predict that the global chip shortage could ease by the second half of this year. Deal light reckons. Who wrote this? Reckons? What is this, the Wild West? Uh, many types of chips will be in short supply throughout 2022, with some component lead times pushing in 2023. So yeah, people are have the prospect that, you know, that this could ease up by 2023. 
Anyways, guys, I hope you learned something about the chip shortage crisis. I invite you to do your own research. <laughs> Behringer takes a lot of crap. Some of the crap they deserve, because sometimes they're assholes. Uh, but other times, they're just a company trying to make money. And what company isn't trying to make money, right? Um, the bottom line is, if you don't want to support them, you vote with your dollars, right? You just stop buying it. You don't you don't buy their stuff and that's totally okay, right? You do you, you do what makes you feel good and sleep at night, right? You know, the counter argument is always that, well, they're making these clones or certain products uh, available, available to people at an affordable price. And then, you know, the other side will keep saying, why can't you just save up money? You know, and I don't think that's any of your business if someone can or can't save money. Uh, I was living paycheck to paycheck for years and I couldn't save up any money. There, there was never money to save. We can't just tell people, you should just save your money. Uh, I don't think that works out in every single case. There, there's people that are really struggling and they just want to get their hands on something like this. They want to be a part of something. They, they want to experience joy just like the rest of us. And I don't think it's our, our place to tell people what they should be doing with their finances. But that's my two cents. If you guys liked this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming. I know that I've been talking a lot about Behringer lately, but before this all, I used to, you know, demo products. I used to uh, teach sound design and uh, make music. I'm an artist. You know, that's, that's where my name comes from, Tiger Arcade. I'm on Spotify, I'm on Apple Music. I invite you guys to check me out. Check me out. Thanks guys for watching and we'll see you next time. Take care.